Welcome back to the Digital Careers Podcast, and uh, we're here with Julia Armstrong. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> um, although she is normally very much behind the scenes, I'd like to introduce you to Julia Armstrong, the human behind Anfisa. Anfisa is a platform that represents Australian contemporary artists. In this episode, we're going to learn more about Julia's story, why she started Anfisa, where her passion for ceramics and floral design comes from and the current exhibition, Interconnected, which explores ceramic artists through the work of 17 artists across Australia. Each carefully selected artist has been commissioned to present a relationship between two distinct bodies of work within the same medium, a functional sculpture and a complementary wall piece that can te uh, connect and converse with each other. Participating artists have been given full freedom of conveyed message, form, colour and technique. The showcase works are bound only by the requirement that they effortlessly integrate into everyday life while authentically embodying each artist's unique voice. This exhibition is open throughout the week from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, Tuesday 17th till Sunday the 22nd of October. So yes, that's the introduction, um, but I would like you to sort of you know introduce yourself and yeah. tell us about what you do and um, yeah, your, how you've come came to have you know, such a passion for ceramics and um, floral design in mm -hmm. ceramics as well. Yeah. I mean, you pretty much covered it, so I think we can go now, but... <laughs> uh, God, me. Um, so I'm an events producer by trade. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing um, for 12 years before I moved to Perth. Um, I'm originally from Latvia, and then I moved to Sydney when I was around 18. Um, and event production is something that I wanted to do. Um, but I felt like something was missing. Like, the longer I was in that career, on that path, more I felt like I'm missing something. Um, and essentially, you know, the quest to find what is it that I truly care about, um, it's kind of what I started in Perth, really. Um, to some degree, I think it was forced search in a sense. I mean, obviously, it was during COVID to begin with. Um, but then I moved to Perth following my now husband. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would actually move here if not for him, but I, uh, I've grown to love it, which is really good. But I can't say I was originally overly excited about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, As most people, I think that's the general yeah, perception it's of Perth. like, hey, where in Australia <laughs> are you? Like, Perth, why? Um, and I didn't really know why, but then as you just kind of continue exploring and you find people you connect with, it all just clicks into place. It's an incredible place to be, an incredible artistic community mm. that I found I kind of fit, I think. Okay. Did you, find you, did you find that you fit uh, when you first came here or you had to kind of work at it? Um, I had to work on it, I'd say, but I mean, the, the way I kind of, what I'm saying, I join artistic community, that's just a bit of a overblown statement, really, but I just, I was looking for people to, I think I was looking for friends, to be honest, um, and at the time, so Anfisa started as a floral designing business, essentially. Um, and it was just for me to just kind of explore my own creativity, and I just needed an outlet. So with flowers came vessels, and with vessels came people. So that's how I started connecting to the artists, artistic community in Perth. I would just reach out to an artist and go, hey, can I borrow your vessel, do a thing with it, oh, take a photo. By a uh, vessel, you mean like a base? Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. So any like sculptural um, ceramic pieces that can be kind of highlighted by the flowers versus um, okay. it was that balance between showcasing the piece but then also playing with flowers really okay. like the combination of two because it's quite mm. easy to overwhelm the vessel with whatever it is you're creating and I was just trying to create a composition that you know had balance really but so and that's kind of how the first exhibition came around 
So, you know, I was just going around Perth, meeting ceramic artists, borrowing their pieces, doing a thing, taking a photo, putting an Instagram, moving on. Um, and I was like, why don't you just like create something? <laughs> so that's how the vessel edit happened. That was the first exhibition last year at Colbert Space. Um, mm. And it was 12 artists, three vessels each. That was just kind of the first composition. And now we're 17 and with a very bit of a, well, we look very different. It's just one per way artist of looking at it. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm just kind of, I'm still exploring, but what I found ticks for me is, oh, I'm looking around and like, I feel like I know the person, each person behind each piece. And even though I, select, I selected artists by their work. Mm -hmm. It was just a mammoth amount of research and just looking at, do they have a voice? Are they trying to say something? Even if they're not trying to say something, is it beautiful in their own true way? Um, you find the piece, then you connect with the person. And then if two people, like if the, <laughs> if the work they create and who they are is a beautiful balance. And you know, as I was saying to someone the other week, is life is too short to work with bad people or people who don't enjoy working. Um, so if two merge, talent and a good nature, then I found my mm -hmm. artist. That's kind of where it's at. Was it difficult in Perth to find that? Like, did you have to um, dig deep? It's a little bit, really. You just kind of, mm, you, you try to go places. You have to like, oh my God, Instagram is a big thing, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. If I didn't have to be on it, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> but that's how I find a lot of my it's artists. Different finding people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just like going through every single um, like award or graduate show, um, just scouring through catalogs and the lists and just seeing it. I don't know. The thing is, my mix of, th there's a big mix between emerging artists and established. And I'd be really curious to see whether people recognize who would the emerging be and who th would the mm. established be. Um, but I think that there's a really fine line between the two and it's not necessarily recognizable by the end result, but you can tell by the journey um, of how the artist approaches the piece, how they think, what kind of questions they ask. Yeah, I find especially on, it's in, in the conversation that you can yeah. really tell, like especially doing podcasts when you talk to someone, you can really yeah. tell, pick up on their like passion and their story. Mm and uh, yeah, for their work. So it's, it's a conversation is important. Like if there's usually a, like a, st a meaningful story behind the pieces and it, when you pick mm. up on that, you can kind of get a feel of whether yeah, they're established or emerging. It's kind of, I mean, I, I do love working with people that continue learning. Mm. Uh, people who just never stop in a sense. I mean, it's probably, uh, I'm probably reflecting because <laughs> well, like I don't, I don't, I never stop. I think nothing's ever enough. That's kind of how I operate. But um, I love when people see a challenge and then go, hell yeah, I'm going to explore this. Yeah. And one of the artists in this exhibition, I was pleasantly and so beautifully surprised by, um, I won't tell you who she is, but I mean, most of them are females <laughs> or and identify as she, her. Um, and incredibly, very, very established artist, um, very quite well known, very experienced. And she asked the most questions and always really good questions. Mm. And then I was like, wow, I'm actually learning something from yeah. that person. But the end result of a piece is perfect for not from a technical point of view, but also from the functional. So the, w the there are two pieces, right? So one is an object mm -hmm. and table object is somewhat easy. You just need to make sure it doesn't fall off balance wise, yeah. which is sometimes harder. It's easier said than done with a wall piece 
how it's hung on the wall and whether it's as easy as doing this. It's not that easy. Mm. <laughs> um, and yeah, just the way she approached it and like it was very collaborative way of working together and I really enjoyed that when it's not just you know you give them a you know you give a person a challenge and a task and they go let's solve this together yeah and it's amazing it's kind of like that what makes me take it slow like i don't know i feel like it's maybe it just gives me this little oh, i'm a part of it i don't know yeah, it's, it's I think it's very special it's that creative process and it doesn't matter if you're the person creating it or you're kind of like yeah. a part of it that teamwork like it's that like discussion and it's that yeah. you don't know what it's gonna look like and it's that anticip no. anticipation for it what feels it's going to look like. Yeah. It feels special. It's like I know I had kind of nothing to do with it, but there is like a tiny little piece that is something I said or it was a conversation we had and I look at it and I go, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's something about that collaborate, like being connected to the way artists think or creates, or I don't know, like I don't have a talent for ceramics. I have no patience. And if something breaks, my heart will break. Like, oh my God. Um, it's a heartbreaking um, medium, probably pun intended in this kind of regard. But like, I was talking to Jess Salinger, her work is right there the other day. And she's like, I cannot be attached to anything I create because they can break at any point. Mm. I'm like, God. Yeah. That's interesting, like the, the artist attachment to their work. Imagine you've spent like eight weeks creating something and then on the last firing, it breaks or it breaks during shipping or someone knocks it yeah. and it's gone like, like that. <laughs> the fragility of it is beautiful, but I find it quite difficult emotionally oh, okay. because you get so attached. Um, I had a few tears coming, like leading up to the exhibition. Not mine. Mine as well, actually, no, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, they're so emotionally charged. That's what I find very special about them as well. Do you think it's the fragility of um, ceramics that kind of makes it? sought after by like the upper echelon market for like you know amazing houses and like you know expensive know. large houses because i hope so you can't <laughs> like it's like you can't touch it you know what i mean so then it's like it's got that feeling of yeah being like yeah the and uh, well the thing is as well um quite a few of the pieces here are functional they hold water they hold stems um, one is essentially a incredibly beautiful fruit bowl. Okay. 90% of them are made to function. They're standing on their own, but they also have a purpose in your home, in your household. You can put flowers in them, you can put you know, lemon in it or whatever it kind of might be. Do Hello, come on through, don't be shy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, Germaine. <laughs> I was just talking about you. <laughs> do you think uh, it's important for the ceramics work to be functional as well or it doesn't matter too much like do you prefer it to be functional i'm exploring that at the moment so at, it started from beauty and functionality both it had to be both um, each piece had to be watertight it had to be thought through about that you can use it with flowers so this is the initial um, kind of information piece that you gave to the artists yeah, to last create year. their work. Yeah, La okay. for the last year's exhibition, it was it was all about functional sculpture. Okay. And more, I'm learning about ceramics, and more. It's kind of I didn't actually know what this exhibition is going to be. If you look, it, like last year after the first one finished, I didn't really know what I'm going to do. Um, it was just kind of like, what do I feel is the next step? And I realized that not many artists actually explore beyond the object. There is a bit of that in Europe, um, transferring ceramic 
onto the wall like you would, you know, it's a mm -hmm. painting essentially. Yeah. But I haven't really seen it that much in Australia and 90 if not higher, if not more of my artists never created anything beyond an object. Mm. It, and by object it can be just purely sculptural work or it can be functional wares, um, it can be literally anything, just it was never meant to be hung. Um, and I find it fascinating. Like I love giving, A, I love exploring and B, I know I can see what the potential of that is. So most of these artists, yeah. they had never created something that was hung on the wall? Yeah, that's correct. Mm. So I think that's if you take that in consideration, I think what has been accomplished with those 17 artists is absolutely incredible. And some people surprise me beyond, like, I don't know. I have a couple of artists that, that they never cease to amaze me. I think they've created their best work and next thing they're like, oh my God, they delivered something that I never imagined. That's completely opposite of what they've done before, but it's still incredible. I love to be surprised like that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's always good to find new ways to explore your medium mm -hmm. and kind of opens up new possibilities for your work. Like, yeah, yeah I would have never, maybe I have seen some works on the wall, but I've never thought about it. It's just not mm. something that I think about personally. But looking at these, it looks amazing. Like you could just, um, yeah, it could just go well with other pieces of art, other paintings, mm. and um, yeah, it's just another way to express ceramics, which is interesting. Mm. The um, kind of the I don't know if ironic is the right word, but I kept hearing I can't buy this ceramic object because I have a dog, I have kids, I have this, I have that, I have nowhere to put it. And that's how I started thinking about wall pieces. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> to some degree. 